I can we did we change this? Perfect. Thank you. I think that's better. Thanks. Hi. So good morning um, and welcome to Istanbul. Um, it's so great to see so many people here. Um, I think after a lot of the work, the preparation, the debate, the tears and the fights that happen. Sorry, no, we don't we don't fight, but anyway. Um, it's, it's really good to have you here. And we just wanted to say a formal welcome um, and how happy we are and how much we hope you're gonna enjoy the next couple of days um, together. You didn't hear me before or? Yeah, thanks Jackie. Um, cool. It's great to see old faces. It's great to see new faces. I think it's long overdue that we have some time together in person um, to catch up, but also to debate, to share lessons learned, and, and I think to move forward a number of agendas um, that, we've been, that we've seen coming up um, in this sector. Um, so welcome, and we hope you enjoy um, what we've prepared for you. Thank you. Nothing more than what Juan said. I think first, really, it is probably one of the happiest days for us after COVID pandemic. It's, uh, it's amazing to see the colleagues, those whom we know, those whom we don't, and we are just meeting now. Um, it was really uh, also very much appreciated that you, all of you, especially those who made long travels, that you really made it and you arrived. And uh, uh, we hope that the coming days will be useful for all of us. And uh, as we usually say, I think that the main agenda item of this event is also to know each other, to see each other, to meet each other. That's it from my side. I think we have to pass it to... Uh... Ah, okay, that's true, actually. Who are you, Juan? <laughs> Sorry, now that we're gonna get to know each other, I think I've met most of you, but in case we haven't, um, my name is Juan. I'm the Global CCCM Cluster Coordinator um, from IOM side. So, as I say always, I cannot avoid that. Juan is my better professional half. Uh, so I'm, my name is Derhayo. I'm the global CCCM coordinator uh, from UNHCR side in Geneva. And uh, over to you, Charlie. I don't even need to introduce you, but Charlie has been facilitating our uh, annual meetings for the past three years. It is the first time we meet Charlie in person. Like we, we were not sure whether he's a robot because he's always very active, very punctual, very clear. Now we are very happy that he actually he's, he exists in reality. We, we are not sure whether he's a robot or not yet. Now we have to check the flesh. We ha he has to bleed, basically. Over to you, Charlie. <laughs> Thank you, Dare. Thank you, Juan. So first, let's see if this works. Uh, no, Bruce, I might need to nod at you to move a slide if you're there somewhere. But we'll start with this. So first, let me have a good look at you all, because you are here. This is incredible, isn't it? This is like a wow moment. I don't know about you, but I will confess here that I found lockdown pretty difficult. I got really cross with everyone littering in the park near my house. So cross, I nearly had a fight with one guy. And then I realized I shouldn't do this. I should go and pick up litter instead, so I did. But lockdown's not normal for us. It, it's not a normal human thing to do, to have you all back here, to see you all in this room, to see you talking to each other in the lobby where people are hugging and shaking hands is something very, very special. And I have to say, I am really, really excited. You look fantastic. Really, really good. And we have for you over the next few days, 30 something sessions and they are amazing and I know they're amazing because I have been bullying and cajoling your facilitators to make them amazing they have been working day and night and night and day and some of them even to the last few moments this morning when they gave me their presentations but they're going to be great 
And I'm going to tell you about all of those sessions in a little while. Um, but before I do, I just need to do a little bit of housekeeping. So I'll try this again. Yay. OK. So welcome to our venue. Our venue's here in the Marriott Hotel. It's a vast and luxurious space. I hope you're comfortable. If you need anything, there's always someone you can ask. We're going to be spread across two floors. So we're going to be in here for all of our plenary sessions. And this is called Ballroom 1 and 2. But we also have three other rooms for breakouts. So sometimes one of the breakouts will be in here, but one of the breakouts will be next door. And I bet you didn't even know there was a room in there, right? So that's ballroom three. And to get there, you need to go around a corridor at the back. So the first person to get lost wins a prize. The other two rooms are called Asia and Europe, because obviously we're in Turkey. And they are both upstairs. So to get to those, you either take the elevator or the stairs if you're enthusiastic, and then you come back this way. And just as if you were on the Bosphorus heading north, you have Asia on your right and you have Europe on your left. Okay? The other thing to let you know is that there are bathrooms everywhere, so I don't think I'm going to tell you where they are. I'm sure you've found them. If you haven't found them, ask someone who looks friendly and they'll point them in the direction. And in the event of a fire, you'll see that there are green signs above all the doors. Aim for one of those, try to keep up with me. I'll be going pretty quickly. The Wi-Fi, if you haven't got it yet, is that. So the, the Wi-Fi uh, is the conference Wi-Fi and the code is just IOM. That's all you need to know, so just IOM. You'll notice we've got some fantastic headsets on our desks. That's because our amazing technical team over there is interpreting, or they're setting it up for interpretation. And our interpreters, everyone give the interpreters a wave. There they are. They're going to be working incredibly hard for you. So if you would like interpretation, pick up a headset and search a channel. Channel one for English channel two for Arabic, channel three for French, and channel four for Spanish, okay? And for those of you who are joining online, because we are, we are Zooming at the moment, this is part of a Zoom meeting, so wave to everyone online. And the camera, wave at that camera over there. And they're waving back, I'm sure. Hello, onlineers, thank you for joining. We're sorry you couldn't be here. Um, we're going to try to interact with you as much as we possibly can. Um, and you can put any comments or thoughts into the chat, and we will try to bring those into the meeting here. There are also interpretation channels online, I hope. So you will be able to access those different languages online too. So I don't think there's very much more for me to say. I will come back in a few moments and tell you all about what we're going to do, where we're going to do it, who's going to be doing what, all of the details of the agenda. But for now, I'm just going to hand back to our esteemed global cluster coordinators. So we're going to start with Dare, who is going to give us a little bit of an update on CCCM globally. Thank you, Charlie. Um, I have a very, very short presentation from my side. One on myself will we'll do the will do the basic the the introductory presentation. And I think, first of all, I cannot really um, uh, brief you on everything. It has been three years, and uh, um, we will have the coming days to to hear from you because I think probably one of the main achievements is this meeting in the past two years to get all the colleagues together. We have done a great job, all of you in different locations and each of you, every time we listen, we learn more and more from, from your experiences. Um, I will try to, okay. So um, we don't see the, the other side, maybe we can at a certain stage also, because there'll be many other presentations to, to correct the, uh, the image. Um, but in general, we have now, at least in a formal and informal manners, we have 22, it is now 23 coordination structures in 23 different countries for CCCM. This is an important thing for all of us because 
having a coordination structure in these countries will help us get more visibility and you also raise for funds. And of course, again, to expand, to better serve people. Uh, and definitely coordination is something essential because in the end of the day, we are better able to unify our forces as different agencies, individuals working in these 22 countries. Then there has been some significant achievements in terms of activating clusters in several countries in the past years. So we start first of all with Ethiopia. Uh, the cluster was activated in Ethiopia last year. And I think once again, the colleagues from Ethiopia, please just raise your hands here for us to see all of us. So as you can see, well done. We have a great number of participants from Ethiopia today here with us and uh, you have been doing a great job. Um, another cluster was activated also last year in Burkina Faso. There has always been a coordination structure, but we, after lots of uh, negotiations and advocacy, we managed indeed to activate the cluster formally in Burkina Faso. So colleagues from Burkina Faso, please also raise your hands. Congratulations for the activation. Um, Afghanistan, it is still a working group status, but again, it has been really a great achievement for us to activate the working group in Afghanistan. We hope that we will take it to the next level soon. But colleagues from Afghanistan, congratulations for the, for the activation and looking forward for the great job that you already started doing there. And we have activated evacuation center management and displacement in the Pacific region. Um, colleagues, raise your hands. Great, congratulations, well done. And um, this year also, at a certain stage of the year, we managed to activate quickly the uh, CCCM cluster in Ukraine. The hands up. Great colleagues, well done and welcome. And lastly, it happened very recently, the actual official activation of a long-awaited cluster in uh, DRC. DRC, raise your hands. Great. Um, once again, we are really delighted to have these clusters activated. It is, again, just adding more color to all um, other uh, countries. It is important. It's not everything. Sometimes the clusters are not activated, but we still equally coordinate and equally operate. So uh, this is basically the quick part from my side. But what is more important is one of our global uh, pillar in the strategy is fundraising and the advocacy. So we have been doing some analysis for the humanitarian response plans and the financial tracking system to see whether with these activations, with this visibility, with this great leadership of the different coordinators, with this fantastic partnership with the local authorities, whether we have been achieving STD progress in fundraising, bringing more attention on the needs and the gaps in the, in the areas where CCCM covers. So we have done a quick analysis between 2020, 2021, and 2022. Now, what is important is that 2022 is not really reflecting the reality. We are not in the end of the year. Um, it is not capturing uh, many countries because the, 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 the HRPs have not yet been uh, uh, officially published. We could not get um, uh, uh, data from many countries. So we believe it is high, but if you look, if we just forget about 2022, if we look at 2022 versus 2021, we had some really significant increase in our endorsed envelopes. It does not mean that the funding, but at least the recognition of our endorsed envelope has increased by 32%. Now, some colleagues will say, of course, normally there has been some significant increase in the humanitarian envelope in general because of countries like Afghanistan, countries like uh, Ukraine, Ethiopia. Unfortunately, all those are emergencies that have been emerging in the past year. But the overall increase in general in the HRP has been 17%, the general one. But CCCMs, 
was 32% in 2021 compared to 2020. So that's good. It's a, it's a good analysis for us to, sh to show that we are able to make some steady progress in, 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 um, in fundraising. I will, I will try to be quick, so we will not take a lot of time. I don't see, because Charlie, when I don't see him, I get even more stressed. I know he's watching me somewhere. So um, the, the, the areas of activities are still the important areas that we see ourselves focusing on, area-based approach, particip uh, participation in displacement, uh, capacity development, camp management standards, connectivity, sustainability, and the clean energy. So basically these are the areas that uh, um, we have been um, uh, looking at. And I think this is for one indeed, right? We are just continuing uh, or... Uh, I think, yeah, I, I feel that I, I took your part of the presentation, right? It's fine. So I think before we get to um, the specific working groups um, updates, we just want to share with you, um, well, that we haven't been doing nothing for the last year and a half. Um, there's, um, we hope that you've heard from us over the last year or two. Um, sorry, I hope you can see me properly. Um, at the beginning of the year, we had the, the global support team also had a retreat, which resulted also in a visioning um, workshop around capacity building, capacity development, as it was highlighted as one of the big key activities and priorities for the sector. Um, we're going to talk more about this. I think I hope that many of you have also filled in the, the global learning need assessment, which came out as a result from that. Um, we've also been uh, working on um, reviewing some of the guidelines and particularly around uh, mass evacuation in natural disasters, as well as collective center guidelines. Um, we also had different and more colleagues in the global support team who've also been working to develop the, um, the communications and advocacy uh, strategy. I hope you're gonna go and look out for those discussions in this afternoon breakout session, as well as in the marketplace. Um, Marco is going to be um, spearheading those discussion. Um, and we also um, have been working a lot um, Ooh, sorry, I, I should also mention that we're also going to be talking about the men and collective center guidelines in tomorrow morning breakout session as well, if that's something that interests you or is uh, relevant to your context. Um, and we've also been working in engagement a lot with different clusters. Um, some of our key responsibilities as a global cluster is also to encourage and facilitate better coordination between different clusters at the field level as well. One of the things we have cooking, I guess, is um, the engagement with education clusters and discussions around use of schools as collective centers. Um, we've been working with um, child protection area of responsibilities. Uh, we've um, done some work also with the MHPSS uh, reference group as part of the ISC um, bodies. Um, and of course, we have one of the task force and working group with HLP AOR, um, as well as ongoing, long ongoing uh, collaboration with GBV areas of responsibilities. Um, and then a couple of more stuff that you can look forward to hearing from us as well. Uh, we have as per usual, also collected a number of case studies from you this year. Uh, unfortunately, we're a little bit behind on um, finalizing that. So those should be coming out uh, within the next month or two. Um, I believe we've collected 17 case studies this year. So thank you very much for your contribution. Um, and I hope you'll find them as useful and interesting to go through as we have. Um, and we also started looking at updating and revising and reviewing the our cluster coordinators toolkit um, also recognizing that we also need to move on uh, you know building and supporting capacity development for our cluster coordination teams uh, as well as um, a lot of our operational um, colleagues um, 
We also have a number of sessions this year around use of data analysis and, and information within the sector. Um, so both Brian and Lisa have been working really hard on putting together the IM handbook as well for, for the cluster. And, and I hope that you will also find those um, morning sessions on, on Wednesday interesting um, as we talk about how much information um, focus or information heavy our, our sector is in general. We've also been quite busy um, looking at some of our communication tools. Um, you will see a couple of changes um, this year that been, we've been working on. Um, one is starting to look at branding of the cluster and how our communication and information products look and the way in which we present what we do. So we are about, we are close to finalizing our branding guidelines, um, which we will be sharing as soon as it's done. Uh, we preemptively decided we're gonna change the color scheme of uh, anyway, ahead of the publishing of the guidelines. Um, and we've been working quite a lot to revise and, and update um, the website for the cluster. So, we're very excited about those coming out and, and we'll definitely be sharing those for them. Understanding that these are always a work in progress and it's always um, a life, uh, an effort, ongoing effort um, that we hope to, to continue to improve on. So now you do get to hear from the different working groups. Um, oh, oh no, okay. So for the participation working group, we're just going to go down. Mario? <laughs> Sorry, they're given a minute each of the, for the working group. So if they start to go longer. I'll, I'll try to stick to a minute. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mario Lane. I co-chair the participation working group with Giovanna. Um, in close coordination with the working group, we have set up the Community Engagement Forum, which is a community of practice um, aimed to collect examples, uh, best practices, but also it wants to provide a space for people to ask questions, to ask for guidance around community engagement, participation, um, with a specific focus on the participation of women and girls and other vulnerable groups. Um, it's moderated by Kristen from NRC, who sadly can't be here, but We'll be happy to tell you more about this forum in the past few days. We have also been working on a mapping of community engagement actors and initiatives to better understand how we as a CCCM cluster and sector are perceived, what our space is um, and what our role is. And we want to use the outcomes of this mapping to, uh, to do advocacy, recognizing the unique role we have, um, the key player that we are. And I'll stop there, I think I got to a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Maddie. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Maddie. I work for ACTED and I am the new um, Capacity Development Working Group Chair. So that's our first kind of agenda point. Um, so what we've been working on um, recently, so I wanted to share that we have a reference module now available to help you as trainers, um, those of you who are trained as trainers, um, to integrate the minimum standards of account management into the standard training package. So that is available on, um, on the platform. Um, and I also wanted to share, um, Juan mentioned it earlier, that we did a learning needs assessment um, it had two parts to it. So one was the survey that um, I hope a lot of you will have filled in. Um, we had, I think, around 250 responses. So it was really great to see really good uh, participation, really um, got a lot of great feedback from you through that survey. Um, and we also had a kind of more in-depth qualitative um, component of the learning needs assessment. Um, this was kind of trying to understand people's learner journeys and understand how they have learned CCCM. So we will, more to come with all of that. Um, I'm not gonna kind of go through the findings of this now because we only have one minute, um, but you'll be hearing a lot about this in the future and we're gonna use those findings to make sure that we um, are developing um, new products and tools um, in an evidence-based way. Thank you.
Hi, uh, I'm Jörn from NRC Norcap, and um, yeah, with uh, Brian and James, uh, I had the work group on uh, connectivity, clean energy, and sustainability. Uh, and it's uh, important work ahead of us that uh, we will uh, hopefully have engagement from your side because we need to know what you need and uh, we need you to know what you can have. But uh, what we do know is that climate change intensifies emergencies and, uh, and that uh, the big operations have a big footprint. So uh, we hope to engage you on further work on, uh, within this area. Thank you. Now we have Jim, who's run over from... Thanks. Hi, um, I'm Jim Robinson. I'm the Global Coordinator for the Housing, Land and Property Area of Responsibility. So thank you for having me. It feels great to be here and I'm really looking forward to meeting you. Um, now, HLP in CCCM, it's a collaboration between your wonderful selves and the HLP AOR. And it's, um, it's just really important to note that it's through you and your work where so many HLP issues become real. You're working with communities to kind of, you know, deal with disputes, to find solutions, and you're also facing new and complex challenges. So we want a forum to be able to discuss those. We're trying to re-energize this a bit year, this year. And one of the ways we're doing that is starting a process of developing some guidance for HLP and CCCM, you know, to really learn what matters for you and, and what's been tried and what can we do in response to some of the challenges cheeky plug for tomorrow's session on HLP and CCCM. We want to start this process. We want to know what matters for you. What are the key HLP issues? What's important? What's been tried? And how would guidance help you? What could, what could it look like? What would the way to organize it be that's helpful? And also, I'd love if any of you were willing to share some stories, case studies, challenges that you're facing in that session, and we can look at those together. Um, we're also working more immediately on a toolkit that's sort of drawing together existing tools and, and ways of engaging with HLP in CCCM, and that will be coming soon. And that's me. Oh, actually, sorry, one. Um, also, I'm here because I really want to learn how the HLP AOR can better support and work with CCCM. So please grab, grab me at any point and tell me what you need, and let's try and work out ways to work better together. Sorry. Thank you. I'm, I'm surprised the other working group chairs haven't tried to plug their sessions yet. Um, Gio. Hi, I'm uh, Giovanna. Uh, I'm working for NRC and I'm co-chairing uh, the Arab based working group together with Annika. I know that Annika is in online, Annika IOM. If we can say hi to Annika, it's very sad that you cannot be here. Um, so um, what we've been doing the last, uh, months um, we are so the Arab based working group um, we try to uh, um, yeah represent all our uh, path in the last years so start in 2018 uh, many things happen uh, but you know during the last months we focus on uh, designing and uh, building a repository of tool or uh, ABA documents uh, guidance tools uh, reference uh, both uh, from uh, um, uh, tools that were tools or documents that were specifically designed for CCM practitioners, but then also those developed uh, by other sectors, by other colleagues. So to design this repository of tools, we um, set up a steering group uh, with representative from different agency. We also uh, started to think about uh, and, uh, how it should look like an ABA training for CCM practitioners. We have uh, a very draft uh, uh, outline that we would like to discuss with you in one of our session. I think it's uh, tomorrow morning, if I'm not wrong. And um, yes. Yeah. We are we having also a session this afternoon. So if you are interested, it's useful for you uh, to be involved in, in the conversation of Arab based approach. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Um, hello. So 
for those um, who were at the retreat last year, we launched the minimum standards around that time. And together with uh, Jennifer, we have continued over this year to uh, further the standards in one way through um, accreditation by the Humanitarian Standards Partnership, which is um, excellent because it happens so fast. It's not a, an easy process, but it certainly endorses the, um, uh, the quality of the standards at the speed of which it was accepted. Momentous, exactly. We have a live uh, interactive platform um, with um, the standards now available in English, French, and Spanish. And on day three's uh, minimum standards session, which you should all attend, we will reveal further languages. Um, and we have also worked with uh, Red R UK to develop training for the standards with uh, TOT in Ukraine, which will happen next week. Um, and so on top of this, there are many other initiatives that we've been doing, but more of that will be revealed on day three in our dedicated session. And also just, um, this is also the, the USB stick that was provided. So you have um, the handbook version also on, on the stick uh, for your reference in, in English, right? And back to you, um, Charlie. <laughs> Sorry, was that enough warning? <laughs> Thank you. Can I have that one too? Cheers. Um, so apologies for our lighting. Uh, exploration there we're just trying to work out how we make it a bit brighter because I'm conscious that it's not very easy to see me I'll try to wear something brighter tomorrow uh, and our folks online are saying that's difficult too so folks online we're trying to fix the lighting and we'll, we'll get better at that in the meantime I think that we should do something together because we're together and we haven't been together for ages so what I'd like to do is, I'd like to do a little exercise now. And if you're online, this is the moment where you're thinking, ha, 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 I won't have to do this. I'll just sit here in front of my computer. And that's where you're wrong. Because we'll be putting you in breakout groups to do this in just a second. So you need to think of this too. So I want you to just take a moment alone to think of two things. Just two things. Think of it as a meditative moment. I want you to think about something you want to happen in the next three days. And then I also want you to think about something that you want to happen after this event because of this event. So just take a moment and each think of something or two things, if you're very creative, that you would like to happen during this event and something that you would like to happen after this event because of the event. When you've finished thinking those things, smile at me en masse, and then I'll know you finished, and I'll feel incredibly popular. Okay. So what I'd like you to do now you've thought of those things, two sets of instructions. So one for the people in the room and one for the people online. For the people online, in a moment, we're going to put you into breakout groups. And we'd like you to share those things you've thought about with your colleagues in the breakout groups. For those people on, in the room, I'd like you to stand up. And I would like you to look around the room. Come on, stand up. I'd like you to stand up and I'd like you to look around the room and identify someone you've never met before. Never. I don't want an old friend. I don't want your brother or your cousin. Someone you've never met before. And I just want you to go up to them and introduce yourself and share what you just thought about. And after a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to move and introduce yourself to somebody else. So off you go. Tell them what you want to happen in this workshop. So if you really like the person you're talking to, if you really like them, 
make a date for lunch because lunch is happening in 10 minutes. Okay, thank you, people. Excellent. So just, just finally back to your tables. Okay, so quick hands up. Hands up who honestly went and met someone new and didn't go to their friend. Yay, good work. <laughs> Hands up who heard something that made you think, oh, yeah, good idea. Did anyone do it? Yeah? Okay, cool. So this was a, this was a microcosm of the potential of these three days. Okay. You just had about seven minutes. Look what you did in seven minutes. It's amazing. And in about 10 minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you off for a delicious lunch. And at lunch, you've got two options. One is sit next to someone you know, which of course is lovely. But you could also be brave. You could say, hi, I don't know you, but we could eat together. How about that? And we could learn all about each other. I'll leave that for you to decide. For now, I want to tell you about this. And I know it's too small to see, okay? I know it's too small to see, but I also know that on your table or in your hand or when you registered, some of you will have picked up what we, we're calling the linear agenda, which is a, an A5 piece of paper. Who's got one of those? Thank you, Marco. Marco is waving it elegantly there in the breeze. If you've got one of those, then now's a good time to grab it. But you don't, you don't need it as such. I'm going to just explain a few concepts of what we're going to do. So the first thing to say, if you haven't registered yet, if you came down those stairs so quickly, they didn't get a chance to catch you at the bottom of the stairs, please can you go and find Bruce? Bruce is a man over there in a, in a mint colored shirt. He's about to wave, Bruce wave. If you haven't registered, please go and register with Bruce. That way we can make sure you get hold of all the information and you can get access to the information afterwards and we can make sure you're included on the list for everything. The other thing to mention, just as a serious note before we go into all this fun, is we are still in the midst of a global pandemic. Uh, and the important thing is that we are comfortable. And some people are very relaxed and very comfortable, and some people are a little less comfortable. So please just respect the people you're working with and their comfort levels. So we have some lots and lots of hand sanitizer that is being held up at the back by Mario. Oh, Mario's got the masks. Brian's got the hand sanitizer. If you'd like a mask or you'd like some hand sanitizer, go ahead and use it. It will not be frowned upon. If you feel that you're too close to people, move away and we'll understand if you want to do that. We, we need to do what makes us comfortable, okay? Okay, okay, on with the agenda. Here it is, ta-da! Come on, this took us ages. Ta -da! Okay, so what you're going to see here is some big wide sessions, like the opening session up there. Big wide sessions means it's plenary and it's in here. These smaller sessions, like these ones, are breakouts, and they'll be in each of the rooms. But we need you to come to plenary to know which the room is for your breakout session. So. What we're going to do is each morning, you see right at the top, it says recap and the day ahead. That starts at 8.45. That's the 15 minutes before 9 o'clock, the ones you try to avoid, but it's 8.45. So please come and be here at 8.45, and then you'll know where you're going. So I was trying to work out what that meant. Coffee will be available from 8.15 if you want to come earlier. And it's a great opportunity for networking. Please do try and come be in here about 8.45. That'll be really, really helpful. With the sessions in here, as I said, they're going to be broadcast online and we have the luxury of interpretation. I'm sorry to say that we are not able to broadcast our breakout sessions online. So um, 
we are going to rely on you to tell your peers and colleagues about them and how wonderful they are. But what we'll also do is we will write up details of them and they'll be available on the website afterwards. Interpretation is also not available because you see this box, it's like bus stop. We need this to be able to do the interpretation and it doesn't fit in all of the breakout rooms. So what I'd suggest is if English is not your first language, maybe, and I know this is not an ideal solution, but perhaps pair up with others of a similar language and, and go together to breakout rooms. There's an opportunity then to work in groups and, and I think it'll be a more fulfilling experience if you're able to do that. Okay, so what we also wanted to tell you a little bit about was what's happening at the break time and at lunchtime, and that is the marketplace. So out here where you had your coffees before the start of the day, we'll have some market stalls. And what we need is each day, the folk who are on the market stalls to set them up and get them ready and be prepared to tell people about their wonderful stories and show their wares. And today we have Syria cross border. Do we have Syria cross border in the room? Yay. <laughs> They get a clap just for being Syria cross-border, and I'm not surprised. It's a tough job. Yemen, they've got to get a clap, surely. <laughs> Sudan slash Darfur. So maybe we've got hundreds of or several Sudanese contingents from the different regions. Uh, Mozambique. Mozambique, are we not? Yay, there we are. The Global ABA Working Group has a stall today. And uh, DRC, do we have DRC in the room? Yay, super. So if you could catch Bruce, same Bruce, same mint colored shirt um, after this session, he'll show you where and how you can set up for your marketplace. And each day we'll, in the morning, we'll tell who's the marketplace people, how they can set up and where they can set up. Is that okay? Okay, the other thing to say is breaks and lunch, we have made them nice and long. So breaks will be 30 minutes and lunch will be 90 minutes. So you've got loads of time to catch up and chat and drink coffee and smoke if you smoke and don't if you don't. But please, please, please do not start smoking, says Juan. And please, 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 says Charlie, try to come to sessions on time. The breakout rooms, especially the breakout sessions, will just need to start on time to keep us going on time. So you'll miss out on tremendously amazing things. And I've seen the breakout sessions, and they are fantastic. You will be doing all sorts of exciting and fun and interesting things and hearing amazing stories and debating and talking to people and discussing and all sorts of things. And in that sense, I have news for you. And this news is so new that it was news to me about... 40 minutes ago, and that is we have a brand new session. <sighs> Never seen before. Never practiced before and could be brilliant. And that session occurs this afternoon, this very afternoon. And it's not even written up there because it was just invented. And the name of the session is Closed Door, Open Debate. And the reason for this session is because we know that you as humanitarians have a lot to say. You have views and opinions and you like to discuss them. So we've created a session which is an opportunity for you to come into that room and we'll close the door and we'll say, you know, we're just in this room. This doesn't go anywhere else. And we can debate and discuss topical, difficult issues that we want to discuss. So if you've got some issues you want to discuss and you like discussing them in an open debate with a closed door, that is the session for you. But there are, as you can see up there, three other fantastic sessions running, and you can see the descriptions in your agenda. If you have any questions about any of the sessions, what's happening when, feel free just to come and find me or one of the facilitators. Their names are, are on the session plans there. Okay. Questions? Can you just, the reason we need to do the questions into the microphone is because then our colleagues online can also hear them. 
can you please share with us the link for the meeting because other people registered and they didn't receive the, the link and they are calling us now uh, the zoom link yeah 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 we'll put that on a slide and get it up here very shortly or if it could be shared to our email I, it's on the website okay so the link to the zoom channel is on the website okay thank you okay do we have any other questions about about the agenda or anything else? Are you ready? Okay. So I might just shout. Now we're back. Okay, so um, in that case, thank you again for being here. Do we have a question in the middle? Yes, sir. Yes, so when we come back after lunch, come back here, We've got a fantastic plenary session here after lunch. At the end of that session, we will show you where the breakout rooms are. So after lunch, we will be back in here for CCCM today. And then at the end of that session, we will tell you how to get to these four breakout rooms. Is that okay? Cool. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for making your way to Istanbul. The bit you've all been waiting for, lunch, is now upon us. So if you go out the doors, up the stairs, or up the escalator, no, not escalator, elevator, and you will find there's a restaurant called Dish Room. And in Dish Room, there is an untold number of delights that you can consume whilst chatting with your new friend and find out about their work and your work. So we will see you back here in one hour and a half on two o'clock exactly on the dot. Thanks very much and enjoy your lunch.